Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a MacBook Air here that apparently it does not turn on. If I plug in the charger, we've got a green light. All right, and it has apparently started charging. But it doesn't turn on. All right, let's get started. So let's start off with a visual inspection of the inside. So we'll get the back cover off and see if we can see anything amiss. Oh, that's a lot of liquid damage. Okay, well, no prizes as to why this guy doesn't turn on. And of course the customer didn't mention any of this. Oh, it just doesn't turn on. Hmm, I don't know what happened to it. You spilt coke on it! I think. It's fine, it happens. I've spilled drinks. But, if I'd known... Uh, alright. Oh wow, that's in bad shape. Okay, this might be salvageable. Firstly, battery unplug. <sighs> right, we're going to take this apart. I'll just take a couple of measurements first. So I'll put my black probe on ground, and I'm just going to start by probing PP Bus G3 Hot, which is not shorted. Um, PP3V42... is not shorted. Okay. Let's just check some of these other secondary power supplies as well. I'll take a couple of pot shots and just see what comes up. That one's got resistance. I think this one's five volts maybe. Yeah, that looks okay. There is resistance. And that guy looks happy. Okay, well, it looks like there's no screamingly obvious short circuits. We've got this very angry section here. That might be our problem right there, whatever that is. Because that's got actual corrosion on it. Most of this looks like it's just staining. Like, it looks super bad. But I think a lot of that is just stains. And stains are not shorts. However, that is corrosion. So, what is that first? What are we looking at there? just to give me a rough idea on what I'm getting into. Let's get the SSD out. So this is an 820-00165. And if we take a look in the board view, in flex board view, we can see that it is this capacitor here, C7372, that has all the angriness on it. That is PPBus S5 HS Computing iSense. I think that links back to PPBus G3 Heart, which is not shorted. Let's see if that actual rail is shorted. So this um, this rail links into um, CPU vCore, basically. Uh, this joins up to the high sides that go into vCore. We've got phase one of vCore here, or and phase two here, or the other way around. Actually, hang on a sec, we can check. 7310 is phase one. Yeah, so this is this is CPU phase one. That's CPU phase two. High side, high side, low side, low side. Um, so uh, this huge capacitor bank is all just input capacitance for CPU power. Um, now, if that was shorted, I would expect to see a short on PP bus G3 heart, but let's just scrape that corrosion out of the way a sec. And we're not shorted there. Unless I've literally just cleared the short by scraping that away. I might just do a little bit of toothbrushing here and just see if this just clears itself up. Let's spray some alcohol onto the toothbrush and just apply directly to the board. Oh, 
We'll have to check the bottom of the board as well anyway, so... Like, I'm tempted to plug it in and just see if it... see if that's done anything, but also it's a case of we have to take the board out anyway, so... Yeah, let's keep disassembling. It's incredibly tempting to just plug in the charger and just see if removing that corrosion has just done the job. But we still need to take the board out anyway because even if you found and fix a fault, you have to take the board out if there's been liquid damage because you don't know what's underneath. The whole board will need cleaning anyway and I shall remove it for that. What I will probably do is... Um, I'm kind of hoping that I can just clear up the worst um, of the damage here and then lob the board into the ultrasonic cleaner, which I can finally show off after trying several times to make a video involving the ultrasonic cleaner. Each time something has caused the video to be a bust and I've been like, Ugh. I've recorded myself talking about the ultrasonic cleaner and putting boards in there like three or four times now. <laughs> But each time, the job in question has ended up being just a bust. And by that, I mean it was a no-fix, or there was nothing to learn, or it was just otherwise not a useful video. Oh, this is all going to be sticky coming out. Oh, okay. And the bottom is okay. All right, that's fine. Well, that bodes well because the bottom has got all of the um, the delicate stuff on it, SMC and stuff like that. The top is mostly power, so that is a good sign. We'll just take out this I.O. board and inspect that as well. Yeah, that is also looking uh, okay. Just, yeah, the USB port's a bit messed up, but overall that's not horrifying. Very well. Okay, well, that being the case, I'm going to plug this in and see if it turns on and just check what power we've got. Okay, right. PP bus G3 hot is up at 8.6. That means the SMC is running as well. So we should find that SMC reset is also high, which it is. And that means um, PP 3V42. Yep, that's also good. HS computing iSense, that is also fine, 8.6. Uh, all right, so why doesn't it turn on then? Well, it's pretty messed up over here around the back of the um, uh, around the back of the SSD connector. You know, I think I'm just going to strip this and lob it in the ultrasonic. Right, unplug that. Fan off. Heatsink off. All right, I'm going to go and warm up the ultrasonic, and then we'll take a look at that. Back in a bit. So this is my Vivo Digital Ultrasonic Cleaner, as it says on the front. Uh, so this is a really big boy, this. I think it's 20 litres, this one. It was very generously sent in by one of my patrons um, after I mentioned about not having a proper full-sized ultrasonic cleaner. Um, very generously provided, so massive thank you to them. Um, so I use this guy on and off. I've got it set up here. It's all up to temperature. On the front, we've got the heater settings. So we've got set 50 degrees C and it's currently at 50 degrees C, which is what I run it at. Then on the right hand side, we have the timer, which is set to 10 minute intervals that it will run for. Um, so this towel sits on top to hold in some of the heat because the it's not actually very well insulated. So I have that towel on there just to help keep some of the heat in so it doesn't lose too much of it. So this is the basket that goes in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit our stuff on there and then we'll dunk it in. So if we put this to one side. And lift away the lid. 
like a taurine. And put that to one side. As you can see, I have tactical towels set up for things. So that's what it looks like on the inside. We've got a few bits and pieces in there that have come off from the previous use. Uh, there is deionized water in there and a um, electronics cleaning ultrasonic fluid. Uh, nothing particularly fancy. I'm still experimenting with different ones. Uh, so uh, I'll load up the basket and we'll dunk, th dunk that in there and then I'll switch it on. So there's our board in the basket. I've placed it face down. I'm going to do 10 minutes, then turn it over and do another 10 minutes. So we'll just lower that in. So that sits in there. Right, now I'll turn it on. Um, I won't give you any meaningful sound because these things are loud and very unpleasant to be anywhere near when they're running. It's a screeching buzz that they make. So uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, I'm going to rattle the lid to dislodge the droplets. And up we come. Right, and the basket will be hot, so I shall very quickly hook it out. And just bounce it sideways. And now I'm going to Take a quick look at the board. That's cleaned up very nicely. I might actually quit while I'm ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. The backside was actually in pretty good condition. We didn't see any corrosion or anything. I think just one side is gonna be plenty good enough there. Um, so the thing about ultrasonic cleaners is uh, going in for too long will do more harm than good because you're just boiling the circuit board at that point. So I've learned from my experience that um, don't put it in for another round just for the sake of it. Um, it's not like brushing your teeth where they'll only get cleaner kind of thing. You will just start boiling the board away. So let's set this guy to one side. Now ideally what we want to do next is put this into an alcohol bath. Um, but I don't have that set up yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spritz it down with alcohol just to chase all the water out. So I'm going to give it a quick blow dry, spritz it down with alcohol and then leave it to drip dry. Right, so we're nice and dry now, and as you can see, we've got a really clean result. All of the stains on the board are completely gone. Um, there's some darkening on the tips of some of the components, like those capacitors there where we had corrosion, but those should still be fine. Um, so uh, I'm really impressed by how well all of the staining around here has come off as well. It was looking really nasty there. So let's find out if this has actually achieved anything, just because making the board clean doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work, but it's always worth a try. So I've plugged in the fan and I.O. board, which are still a bit manky. I probably should have loved at least the I.O. board in the cleaner, to be honest, but um, we can clean these up manually. We just want to see if the thing works. So plug it in. No fan spin. No fan spin. Wah, 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 wah. Right, so I've plugged it back in again, and we're going to start going through power rails next to see if there's anything that's missing or otherwise unusual. But first, I'm just going to have a quick look with my thermal camera just to see if there's anything getting hot on the board. Not expecting there to be, but it's always worth a casual look. So if I bring my hand in, this area is a little bit warmer. However, that is PP bus G3 hot, that section. 
So there will be some heat there and like, man, it's barely above ambient. So that's nothing. I'll check the other side of the board. We also know we don't have a short on PP bus G3 hot, so is that something? Which is the other side of this area anyway, so I think that's literally nothing. Okay, oh god, this fan is gross. Let's check our rails. So one of the really nice things of Flex Board View is it includes downloadable notes um, that include known measurements for the board, common issues, that kind of thing. So uh, I've got a nice handy cheat sheet here of the S5 rails, S4 and 3, and then SO. So I'm just going to go through all these rails and check if they're present. So we'll start off with PPBus G3 Hot. This was working before we ultrasonic the board, but we'll check it again for good measure. That's 8.6, looking good. So S5 HS Computing Ice Sense. This was where we had corrosion. So that was over here. 8.6. Then S5 HS Other Ice Sense. Uh, we can get that from the top of the board there. That is these guys here, 8.6, right, DC in uh, G3H. This is the power supply into PP3V42. So uh, if we have PP3V42, then that will be working. and. We know we already have that. I'll check it again for good measure, but I know it's already there. 3.46. PPV RTC G3 hot. So this one's a classic for causing these kinds of symptoms. This is the real time clock. So we'll flip the board over to get to this one. And BIOS chip, RTC chip, and we can measure it from the top of that tiny little capacitor there. So ground and capacitor, 3.33. Then PP5VS5, so 5 volt standby. So if we go from that chip and then there's a big cap directly underneath that we can measure on. 5 volts. So it's called PP5VS5. So the 5V indicates that we're expecting it to be 5 volts. So uh, we, can look up, we can look up what these things should be in the schematics, but the name gives it away. And 3V3S5... Uh, we've, we're already on the back of the board, so we'll look there. Uh, once again, this can be got from near the RTC chip. And I'm fairly certain it's going to be there if the RTC chip is already working. 3.3. All right. So we've got an S5 state. Why aren't we powering on then? So let's look for S4. So PP5V S4. There's another power chip there that we can check. So BIOS chip across and down a bit, big capacitor. Oh. Okay, that's not there. What about 3V3S4? Uh, are there any easy spots to measure this? Yeah, any of the capacitors around here. Okay, fine. Let's track one of these down. Top pin of the bypass capacitors next to these little chips. Also missing. Okay, so it looks like we're not reaching an S4 or S3 state. It seems apparent that we're 
not getting out of S5. Um, which to me suggests that the lap, that the board isn't trying to turn on. So what about PM Sleep S4 out? So this is one of those awkward parts in diagnostics where I'm not quite sure how to advance next. Um, I think we'd need to have a look at the uh, S4 power rails and determine why they're not turning on. But I'm going to jump a little bit forward first and check for PM Sleep S4L because that is a signal that is often missing. And if we don't have it, the laptop won't try to turn on. So I'm going to check for that first of all. Um, this signal needs to be high, otherwise the laptop will not want to switch on. It will think it's supposed to be off. Uh, where can I easily measure that from? Oh man, there must be easier places to get this. Yeah, no PM Sleep S4L. Okay. So, uh, in order to get PM Sleep S4L, we need RTC G3H. We know we already have that. RTC Reset L. Measured from the bottom of the board. Okay. Let's switch over to the microscope for this section, I think. Right, that's a bit better. So once again, we're now going to check for RTC Reset L, which we will find here. And that is at 3.32. So the clock is not in a reset state. So far, so good. So now we want SRTC Reset L, which is in the same place, but it's the right hand cap. That is also high. PCH Intervenen is the middle resistor just below those. Three point two. Another PCH signal just below those again. Three point two. PCH clock at a test point. It is. That's that guy there. Ooh. That's not giving me a voltage. What is that supposed to be? It's on the U1900. I think this might be a clock signal, in which case I'm not going to get a voltage from it. Let's find that in the schematic. Pin 12. Yeah, that's a clock frequency. I'll switch over to clock mode just in case I can get a read on that. I don't think my multimeter is going to give me a useful output there, though. Nope, there we go. We've got a 32 kilohertz signal there. So that clock is active. No problem. PP3V3S5. Three point three volts. PM DSW power good has a handy test point. Three point four five. 3v3 suspend. Three point three volts. PM bat low. Uh, let's go for the test point on that. I think. It is not low. Okay, 
I'm rapidly losing faith in this troubleshooting method. I'm trying to be very systematic and just go through all the things, but I'm getting absolutely nothing right now. Ah, RSM reset low. Just as I was losing faith, RSM reset is low. So that means RSM is in a reset condition. Uh, let's check the last one, power button low. So this should be high because the power button isn't connected. Get that just off of the SMC over here. Just got to find the right test pad. So um, there is a row of resistors, three test points, and it's the middle one. And power button is not low. Right, so we're missing RSM reset. And that is why we don't have... Um, and that is probably why we're missing PM Sleep S4L. So what is RSM reset? Well, let's search for it and find out. So I'll right click on the signal and search for it. And it will automatically find it in the schematic for me. You could, of course, just do a control F in the PDF file if you're not using FlexBoard View. So this is part of system power management. It's an in signal. So where does it come from then? So let's do next item. It comes out from U8130. And it's generated by PP3V3SUS and PP3V3S5, which we should have. So we can have a look. What tells this thing to turn on? It's pulled up most of the time. So in order to be in a reset state, something has to be actively pulling this thing down. Because what we've got here is we have a power rail with a pull-up resistor. So in a normal state, there is 3.3 volts here, and a little bit of that will trickle through this 100k resistor, pulling this rail up to 3.3 volts. But if this chip, U8130, or the PCH, where it was going to, if those decide to short it to ground to send it low, they will pull it down, indicating that we're in a reset state. So we could have a look at U31, U8130 and see if that's causing our issue. Does it go anywhere else? It does not. So if this signal is low, either the PCH is pulling it down or the U8130 is pulling it down. So we could have a look at this and see if this is working. Um, kind of making this up as I go along, if I'm honest. So let's have a look. Where is the U8130? That is on the top of the board. Oh, you know what? There's the CPU. You know what was right here on the board? A massive heckin' black stain. So, we might be onto something here. So that chip there, there's the CPU. That is U8130, and it's supposed to be sending out our um, reset signal from pin 6, which is in the bottom left. Now, it looks pretty clean because we ultrasonic to the board, but this chip might be dead. Doesn't look dead to me, but you never know. Let's probe it. So let's go through its pins. Firstly, it needs power. So it's getting power on pin 1, which is VDD, and that is coming in the bottom right. And that is bypassed by this capacitor here. So we should find uh, we should find 3.3 volts here. Which we do. So the chip is receiving power. Alright. Next, it needs a sense rail, which presumably tells it whether it's supposed to be generating the signal or not. 
So let's check pin two, which is the sense rail. So this should be PP3V3 suspend. Sus. And that one is the next pin. So I'm going to check directly on it because I've got my big stabby pointers on. That's at 3.3 volts. So far, so good. So we've got a suspend power good signal here. Let's see if that is on. That's a 1.2 volts. What the hell does 1.2 volts mean? It's a very shaky 1.2 volts. Let's just check it at this test point here. All right, that seems a bit suspicious. Do we have a measurement for that? We do. So again, because I'm in flex board view and I have lots of known measurements, I actually have a diode mode measurement of what this is supposed to read. So I'm going to disconnect power from the board and I'll switch my multimeter into diode mode. Now I'll put my red probe on ground and my black probe on that test point. And we should see a 0.63 volt drop to ground. Oh, and we do. Okay. So it looks like, you know, 1.2 volts or so is pretty typical for that. All right. Fair enough. Almost thought I had it then. TP sus power good, Mr. L. Uh, let's power the thing up and see what that's doing. Dodgy looking test point there. 3.3 3 volts, that's alive. Then we've got a ground, and then we have PM, RSM, RSTL, which was low when we last tried to measure it. And it still is. Okay. Okay, so what we could do. We could remove this chip from the board because this is the pull-up resistor that's pulling the signal up to 3.3 volts. Um, so if we remove this chip and the signal goes high, that means this chip is the one that's shorting it down to ground. However, if we remove this chip and it's still low, that means the PCH is pulling it low. So. Let's try taking this chip off because then we can determine what is pulling that signal down. If it's the PCH, I'm going to assume that I'm bang in trouble and something spooky is happening. And I'm probably going to have to find out exactly what this signal is. However, um, if it's this chip, we could probably just replace this chip. This chip doesn't look damaged, but... On the other hand, nothing looks particularly damaged after you put it through an ultrasonic cleaner, which is one of the problems with it. You do erase the evidence. However, we inspected the board first. So, you know. Doesn't want to go without a fight, but we're right next to the CPU. There's a lot of power planes here. Come on. There we go. All right. So let's come all the way over here and plug in some power. Bam. Green light. Ah, and the fan. It spins, which means that reset signal is up. All right, so the chip that didn't look like it was broken was broken. However, this is not surprising because it also got drowned in whatever the rest of this laptop got drowned in. Um, now, the problem is I don't fully understand what this chip does. My guess is it's looking at the thing, it is sensing a suspend rail, and it has a sus-p-good output. 
So my guess, um, and it's it's called 3v3 sus detect. So it's obviously to do with detecting whether one of the power rails is up and that sus is suspend. So it's obviously to do with detecting whether the laptop is in a suspend mode or not. That would be my guess. Either way, uh, I'm 99% certain that we need this chip. It's also marked with critical. So yeah, we, 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 we got to put this back on the board. Uh, so let's find a replacement one. Um, we'll find a replacement one, put it on, and we'll see if that does the job. We might not be out the woods yet because we have to consider the possibility that um, we have not removed a faulty part. We've just tricked the board. Um, it might be that the board does not want to turn on, but we have removed its ability to prevent itself from turning on, if you see what I mean. So uh, I'm going to track down a donor board that has one of these chips on it, um, and we'll go from there. Stealing from donor board. Stealing from donor board. Hopefully this comes off without a fuss, because the board is in a laptop and I don't want to take it out. I will add some fresh flux and solder to the board. Whoop. Clean up those pads. Right, that didn't really go where I wanted it to, but it should be good enough. Let's go for that. Plunk that on there. And reheat. Right, that's not particularly straight, but it's on. Sometimes less is more. Uh, okay, time for the... Well, I might be able to get in there. No, I'm going to go in there with a the precision tip. Where is the small boy? That's not even slightly straight. However, we'll check the connections. If the signals are right, then it's right. All right, I think that's all connected up. Let's see if that's done anything. And our survey says... Will it stay on? And the fan is kicking on to high speed because there's no trackpad connected and stuff. That's a fix. Right, we need to get it back in the chassis to make sure we get a picture and stuff. However... I think we have solved it. So, um, the only question is, like, I'm not, I don't fully understand exactly what this does. It's obviously something to do with suspend states and and detecting power states and stuff like that. 
However, we have managed to fix it just by uh, logical deduction. So um, this was, it was one of the chips that had been most hit by the liquid damage itself, but visually it looked fine. However, clearly it was not okay. And clearly the old chip is dead. Um, I wonder if it had been worth doing a reflow on it first. Well, the correct, sig the correct signals were going in and out. If you don't have donor boards, there's a lot of mileage in sometimes just reflowing the chip to see if it comes good. And I mean this for small chips like this, not big BGA. Reflowing, do not re-hot the CPU, that doesn't work. Um, however, small chips like this, there's a lot of mileage in just reflowing them. I don't think that would have worked in this instance because we cleaned the board as well. And cleaning the board should have a very similar effect to an extent. Um, like if there's a bad connection there or something. Um, so yeah, right. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this back in the laptop. Um, I'm going to do some light cleaning on the board again, clean up this fan. I think this fan might be knackered. I might see if I have a better one. But I'll do some manual cleaning to get rid of the rest of this grot. Um, and I'll give the board just a quick wipe down with alcohol again, just a brief brush down, um, just so we get that nice clean look that we had from the ultrasonic back again. Put it back in the laptop and we'll see if it actually starts and runs. See after the cuts. All right, as you can see, I've gone full YOLO and put everything in, every last screw. So if this doesn't work, I shall take psychic damage and be instantly killed. Um, however, if it does work, we should actually see boot screen. So here comes the charger. I've not plugged in the battery because I don't want that to be a factor right now. We have fan spin. We have Chime, screen just initialized, and there's a Apple logo. Ooh, did that just go out? Ooh. Oh, don't be power cycling. Just be upset. I'm okay with upset. It was just upset. Good. And there is a screen with a load of user data on it. Excellent. Uh, right, it's a little bit dim at the moment. I think the brightness is down. Uh, let me just check if I have a password for this just so I can get it into macOS and turn the brightness up and be like, look, it works. No, I don't have a password. Okay, uh, I don't have a password, but we have a picture on the screen. That means we win. So I will now safely shut that down. So I can now plug in the battery. The battery is probably okay because there was no short circuit. If we had a short circuit on PP Bus G3 Hot, that will just constantly drain the battery. So I would expect to see battery problems with that as well. Um, doesn't seem to be the case here. Um, so uh, yeah, I can just put on the back cover, which, oh, that, oh, that also needs cleaning still. Right, and that's us all done. Uh, it needs a bit more cleaning up. However, it's the end of the day. I'm going home. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.